Hi guys, welcome to Hope with Jonathan podcast. And on this podcast, we will share the patient's personal story with battling kidney disease, dialysis, transplant, and more. Guys, we'll also share stories of hope and encouragement for those that are in need of a living kidney donor. We will also advocate for them, a living donor, to step forward to give them the miracle gift of life of transplant. Guys, based upon my personal near-death experience with kidney disease, I started this streaming show called Hope with Jonathan and also this podcast, Hope with Jonathan Podcast. Guys, if you want to hear more stories like this, please stay tuned. Hope with Jonathan Podcast is a Hope Media production. Never let hope become a memory. Hope with Jonathan Podcast is a Hope Media production. Hope with Jonathan Podcast is in collaboration with Impact America Media, where we give hope to patients to continue on, stay motivated, inspire, and encourage them to continue in the journey. For more information on Impact America Media, please visit impactamericamedia.com. Again, Hope with Jonathan podcast is in collaboration with Impact America Media. Hey guys, go over to www.kidneywarriormerch.com. Submit your story today and get a shot at being the Warrior of the Month. If you're selected as the Warrior of the Month, you'll get a chance to interview with Hope with Jonathan podcast. Whether you're a kidney warrior, kidney uh, dialysis patient, or even a kidney transplant patient, or maybe you've just been diagnosed with kidney disease, go over to www.kidneywarriormerch.com and submit your story today. Kidney Warrior Merch is a supporter of Hope with Jonathan podcast. Again, guys, that's www.kidneywarriormerch.com. Hey guys, welcome back to the Hope with Jonathan podcast and I'm your host, Jonathan Trailer. And hey guys, on this week's episode of Hope with Jonathan, we had a very special guest, Miss D. Moore from Birmingham, England, guys. And that's right, this was an international interview. We had co-hosting on the show... The awesome Mr. Kyle Hawkridge from KWM. And if you don't know what KWM is, it's Kidney Warrior Merch. And uh, Dee was selected as the Warrior of the Month. And we, uh, she got her opportunity to come on and talk about her personal story with uh, battling kidney disease. And uh, she discusses her 
podcast on there. If you guys haven't checked out her podcast yet, you guys are missing out. I came across a Diary of a Kidney Warrior podcast on Spotify, and I also come across it on Apple Podcasts. Uh, So it's streaming on most uh, platforms uh, where you enjoy your podcasting, but you can check it out, I know for sure, on Spotify and Apple, and she also has a YouTube channel as well that you can also listen to her podcasting. The Diary of a Kidney Warrior podcast is amazing. Uh, She has some really awesome interviews on there. And uh, it was a great honor to bring Dee on our show. She's an awesome person, great warrior and advocate of kidney disease. And uh, what she's doing right now with her podcast is really, really cool. Um, I like the way that she is doing her podcast, the format, and uh, her designs, her logos, everything looks great. So, guys, again, it was a truly an honor. I mean, Kyle uh, being from Canada, and then Dee being from England, and then me being from the U.S. Uh, here in Texas, in the great state of Texas, uh, it was, you know three countries represented so it was a definitely an awesome awesome interview uh really really cool really really cool event and uh it was great to have d on the show awesome always a pleasure and always a pleasure to have kyle come on and co-host as well so guys i hope you guys will thoroughly enjoy this interview it's uh, very informative. Again, guys, this is D. Moore from a Diary of a Kidney Warrior podcast. Go check it out. Hey, guys, I'm going to let you guys roll into this interview. Again, guys, y'all stay safe out there. God bless you. Remember to spread love and remember to take care of your kidneys. God bless. Hey guys, this is Jonathan, the host of the Hope with Jonathan podcast. And hey guys, Hope with Jonathan now has a website, www.hopewithjonathan.com, where you can go over and find out where to follow us on all of our social media links, our podcast, our YouTube channel, and much more. Again, guys, for more information on Hope with Jonathan, you can go to www.hopewithjonathan.com. Hey guys, welcome to Hope with Jonathan. Appreciate everyone's support for the show. I hope you guys will uh, share this with your friends, share it all over social media. Guys, we have an incredible, incredible interview today uh, all the way from England. We have a guest, very special guest, uh, Miss D. Moore, uh, all the way from England, guys. This is going to be an amazing, amazing show Uh, D was selected as the Warrior of the Month. Uh, She also has a podcast, uh, Diary 
of a kidney warrior podcast that you can find streaming uh, on most platforms. Guys, this is going to be an amazing, amazing show. I can't wait to get started. Uh, we also have a very, very special co-host, Mr. Kyle Hawkridge, all the way from Toronto, Canada, uh, joining us from KWM Kidney Warrior Merch. Uh, without further ado, let me bring on my very special co-host, uh, Mr. Kyle Hawkridge. Hello, Kyle. How's it going, buddy? Good, Jonathan. Good to see you again. Great to see you too, my friend. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. There's no more snow in Canada. We had some this week, but it's all gone now. And hopefully we're out of the woods. Uh, doing very good. And I thank you for helping me pick this Warrior of the Month and interviewing her today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh Kyle uh, selected a Warrior of the Month. Uh, if you submit your story with uh, Kidney Warrior merch, you'll, you get a shot to uh, get a chance to be uh, selected as the Warrior of the Month and get an interview with Hope with Jonathan. And uh, D. Moore uh, was selected uh, as the Warrior of the Month. Um, and she's uh, agreed to come on to the show. And I'm just really, really excited and very grateful that she's uh, willing to come on and do this uh, exclusive interview with us. And uh, Kyle's brought on the co-host, of course, because of uh, Kidney Warrior merch. Uh, why don't you tell everybody just a little bit about uh, KWM and what you're all about? Okay, so KWM is a platform that we've built um, based on warriors, uh, building a platform for warriors to tell their story. We, have, we build it in levels, so the level of comfort for each warrior. We have a blog style where you write, write out your story. We have video style called um, Message of Hope where you can tell your story in a, on a video in a two, three minute segment. Um, we have a warrior's memorial wall where we can honor warriors that have passed uh, before us. Um, we just try and help you get your story out on a different platform other than the major platforms of social media. Right. And then we have a line of clothing also on the back end, uh, optional thing that you that says Kidney Warrior, many different designs, and you can pick something out there too. So when you're selecting the Warrior of the Month, what, what do you look for in a warrior to, uh, you know, possibly select or why, why, why did you select D? Let me ask you that. Um. When I, when I select a Warrior of the Month, it's the hardest decision in the world I could ever make. Yes. Because everyone, uh, I, don't, I don't call this a contest, but everyone that submits a story is very inspirational in their own way. And I wish we just had the time to interview every single one of them. I know we do backtrack and we, we do interview off the Warrior's Wall. And we have other partners that are looking at the Warrior's Wall. But with D story... Dee has a really great story. I don't want to wreck it. Let her, we're going to let her tell it. But yeah. also with her, her, what inspired me was the way she is ma um, creating awareness for kidney disease with her diary of a kidney warrior brand and her podcast. So it was very inspirational. Her posts, her, she's just amazing. And you, you'll learn in a couple of minutes about her. Yes, yes. Well, I'm not going to waste any more time with me rambling on, and I'm going to bring on our very, very special guest, uh, Miss D. Moore. And uh, guys, you're in for a real treat. I'm going to bring her on, and let's bring on our special guest. One, two, three, come on. Hello, D. How are you? Hello, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well, doing well. Welcome to Hope with Jonathan. I really appreciate you doing the show. 
Thank you for inviting me. It's a real honor. It really is. Thank you. So, D, why, why don't you tell everyone uh, where you're from and uh, just a little bit about yourself? Um, I'm from Birmingham, England, which um, Birmingham is the second largest city in England and in the centre of England. Um, I'm 43 years old. Um, I'm married with two children and I work for the National Health Service in, in my you know, in my day job and all my free time, I do kidney health advocacy and the podcast. Yes, uh, guys, D has an amazing, amazing podcast. If you haven't listened in, uh, I suggest you go over to, uh, she's on uh, Spotify, um, I believe anywhere pretty much that you can find, uh, you know, podcasts uh, for the most part. Uh, look for her. Uh, she's got an amazing podcast, a Diary of a Kidney Warrior podcast, where she does interviews. Uh, and I've really enjoyed her podcast. I've listened to quite a few of them. Uh, I try to listen to every week uh, if I can. So, uh, guys, please go over and check it out. It's got amazing podcasts if you're into, uh, you know, kidney uh, interviews and things like that, things that have to do with kidney disease, uh, kidney disease awareness. So. <laughs> But uh, D, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about your personal story with uh, kidney disease? Okay. Well, my journey with kidney disease started in 2018. Um, I've been feeling unwell over a period of time. And um, this kind of, the symptoms progressed until I really just was struggling to function like everyday tasks became way more difficult. You know, I was struggling to kind of get through work and just everyday tasks. So I went along to the hospital. I went along to a &E, um, to get myself checked out because I, I just couldn't ignore it anymore. And when the doctors did um, some blood tests on me, they said straight away, we're going to have to admit you. Your infection markers are, are through the roof. Um, so we're going to have to admit you now. So this came as a real shock um, that I had to be admitted. And I was in the hospital just over two months in total. And during this time that I was in the hospital, my kidney function plummeted. The doctors were doing tests after test after test. Um, they, you know, they every test that you can possibly think of to try and work out what was happening and what was causing my kidneys to fail um and you know it, they in the end um you know could not explain um why you know why it, this had come about they kind of put it down to a, an infection during the time that i was in the hospital i was fevering every single night for seven and a half weeks um, until they put me on steroid, very heavy duty steroid treatment um, for the final week that I was in the hospital. And that kind of stabilized things and my kidney function came up a bit. Um, and so when I was discharged from the hospital, I was at stage four. Um, but I thought in the beginning that I would just recover and get better. I never anticipated that this was going to be something that would affect the rest of my life i just thought you know it will pass it will be fine i'll be fine but as the the weeks turned into months um things weren't getting better and the december of that year of 2018 my function plummeted um they tried an aggressive treatment to see whether that would help my kidneys to recover but unfortunately this failed and and basically, I was then presented with the fact that this was going to affect the rest of my life, and this, you know, this wasn't going to go away. So I decided that while I was, you know, on this journey, working, trying to figure out what I was going to do, I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll share my journey online and share what I'm learning as I'm learning it. So I started um, a vlog and on the, the YouTube channel, my other YouTube channel. And I just started from there, really, and um, sharing my blog online 
and then I kind of did a bit more on social media. And then in May of 20, that was April 2019, and then in May 2019, I had a meeting with my consultant and he told me that he believed that I was six months away from dialysis. And this came as another blow because I really, you know, I just wanted to get better. I wanted to get back to normal. I didn't have to deal with this. But And when he told me this, that, I, that he believed I was six months away from dialysis, I was like, no, I'm not. I'm going to prove you wrong. And I'm going to prove you wrong. That's going to prove you wrong. I'm going to do everything that I can do to help myself. And after I left that appointment, I kind of was quite fired up, but then I kind of became discouraged. Then I went to see my health coach, and she said something to me that changed my life forever. And she told me, do you need to choose to live? And I want you to say those words, I choose to live. Wow. I sat there, and I did and I didn't say anything for quite a while, actually. And she kind of gave me some space and left me to it. And I sat there and eventually I said, I choose to live. I choose to live. Wow. And she got louder and louder until I started shouting, I choose to live. And I began a journey then in terms of changing the diet, getting back into exercise like I was doing before. I became a kidney warrior. And over the course of that, um, in December, I did a 10 day challenge of exercising every day for 10 days. And basically, from that, um, people kind of started to see me online and know me as being the kidney warrior that trains and works out kind of thing. And continued to do it online. And then in August 2020, um, I started the Die of a Kidney Warrior podcast. My husband suggested this idea. I had never even heard of a podcast at this point when he suggested doing a podcast, um, which seems so funny now. Um, but when I looked into and started to do research into podcasts and what they were about, I really felt that this fit with my personality really well. And I wanted to be able to create a platform that was a bridge between the clinician and the patient and basically open up open dialogue and communication between the two because I really believe that the best outcome of care is when clinicians and patients work together. Um, and you know the podcast really is about empowering people to take care of themselves, to thrive within their diagnosis and to choose to live, which is something I say all the time. Um, so yeah, so my journey really has been a journey of severe ups and downs, but overall, um, I choose to live every single day. I choose to make the best of the life that I have. You know, anybody, you know, can die at any point in time, you know, we're not going to live forever. But what I am determined to do is thrive and I choose every day to be like, I'm going to make the best of the time that I have and encourage everybody around me also to have the best time um, that they can have too. Wow. That is so impactful. So inspiring. So you got a, you have an amazing story. Um, I really like that. I choose to live. That's, that's very inspiring, hopeful and encouraging. And um, that's what that's what this show is all about is to bring others hope and encouragement. So I really appreciate you sharing that with us. Uh, very, very inspiring. So, Thank you. so why don't you tell us a little bit about how uh, health healthcare, as far as like uh, kidney disease and things like that, how is it a little bit maybe different uh, over in England? Uh, versus maybe the states and uh, in Canada? Well, in England, we have the National Health Service, so which is paid for through taxes. Um, so, so at the point of treatment, so when I, was, when I went into the hospital and for the whole time that I was in the hospital and when I left the hospital, I didn't have to pay any money at all for my treatment. So oh, wow. So, <laughs> so I would say that that is a major difference between um, uh, 
you know, the healthcare here and healthcare in America. There is private healthcare over here as well, but we have the National Health Service. So all of my career was under the National Health Service. Um, and like I said, I did not pay out of pocket for any of my medication or any, wow. of, my, any of my treatment and still don't. Um, in terms of care, I mean, in terms of the care, I think that more needs to be done over here in terms of prevention, because yeah. what what I what I believed at the time versus what I now know to be the truth was two different things. So I believed at the time that I went into when I went to the hospital because I had these symptoms. I believed that I had normal kidney function at that point, and that my kidney function failed while I was in the hospital. But actually. When I look back on my blood results, um, or going back a number of years, my kidney function had actually been declining over a period of time. It's just that when I got in the hospital, it rapidly plummeted. And so why was it not brought to my attention over the years that there was a change in my kidney function? And there's this kind of, I don't know... There's this kind of, um, I don't even know what word to put on it, but it's like they wait until you're ill, very sick with your yeah. kidneys before they do anything about it. Mm -hmm. And that to me is ridiculous. Like if you can see the earlier on that you intervene, the more that can be done. So when yeah. I was at stage one or stage two or stage three, something could have been done to, to at least slow the decline. I mean, I know there's, yeah. there is no guarantee, but I mean, I'll never know what a difference it would have made had yeah. there been that intervention earlier on in the decline in my kidney function. So I would say over here, um, and I've heard it more than once from more than one person, that people, even if they're being monitored for, I don't know, whatever, whatever, health condition, they, they're they still not jumping in to prevent yeah. the decline of their kidney function. I don't know what that reason is. There's some healthcare professionals that are into prevention, but in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, not enough is being done in terms of prevention. And so in True. terms of what I'm doing with my platform, that is why I'm so focused on prevention, because I know potentially what a difference that could have made to my life now. I might, I don't know, I might be saved one, two or three now, had I have had that. And I would hate for anybody else to unnecessarily go through that same experience um, that I did. Um, yeah. So that's why I'm so vocal about prevention. So I would say over here, absolutely not enough is done in terms of prevention. And um, in terms in terms of um, like dialysis, generally, if you're on hemodialysis and you're going into a hospital or dialysis center, it's available three times a week over uh -huh. here. Um, transplantation um, varies. Um, there is a lack of black donors, minority ethnic donors in this, in this country. Um, and so that impacts on the waiting time that um, minority ethnic people wait for a transplant over here um so I'm, I'm not sure i'm 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 sure that some of these things are international um but in terms of what i know and experience on this journey that's certainly some an issue that comes up again and again but generally um you know my treatment covid has made a, a massive difference to healthcare over here um so i haven't had a face-to-face -face with a, with my consultant for over a year now. It's been telephone, um, so obviously very different experience to what it was before. But um, okay. So over overall, you know, there's there's good clinicians and there's not so good clinicians. Um, no. But one thing I am grateful for, I mean, I recognise that if I had been in the hospital for over eight weeks like I was in, in another country, I'd probably be bankrupt now. So um 
That's one thing I'm very grateful for. Not here. <laughs> yeah. No, all of it sounds really familiar. Everything that you were talking about, uh, we kind of experience over here as well. The only difference is, is, is if you don't have Medicare uh, or Medicaid to help you over here, you're paying out of pocket uh, with a, you know, private insurance or, and if you can't afford that, the good thing is though, is that once, uh, once that you are considered into renal failure, they passed a uh, law over here. It's, it's actually a federal thing that you're automatically covered on Medicare. Um, and so at that point, you know, you're pretty much taken care of, but uh, there's a lot of different things, a lot of different discrepancies and things that, uh, when you get into healthcare uh, here over here, that uh, is really questionable. And uh, like like you were talking about, uh, the doctors here seem to uh, not do a whole lot of prevention as far as uh, you know pushing you toward dialysis instead of talking with you about transplant. Uh, it seems like they want to push patients, you know, right into you know, here, you need to go to dialysis instead of informing them, hey, you need to be talking to people about getting a donor. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what we're, we've been trying to do uh, with a nonprofit organization that I work with, uh, kidneysolutions.org. We've been trying to push patients into what we call preemptive transplant, mm -hmm. uh, which means that you never face dialysis at all. You start looking for a donor right away. And uh, so that's kind of how... You know, you, we have some similarities, but uh, some differences as well. Uh, what about you, Kyle? What, what's it like over there in Canada? Uh, we're, we're, we do exactly what you just are offering up. I know when my wife was stage three, um, the nephrologist said, you you got to start looking for a donor. And we started from that moment with our family list. And unfortunately, none of us... Um, None of us are a match for her and we or medical issues that we can't donate. But over here in Canada, it tends to be look for a transplant before dialysis. And our other good part is we have universal health care, just like the UK. So our medical bills are not <laughs> ramping up either. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, like I said, once you get on Medicare, I mean, you know, your bills are are pretty much taken care of, but you know, it can be a, it can be a process for some people. I, I went on it right away because I was an emergency case. Uh, so once I reached, you know, stage five ESRD went into complete failure, I was, you know, covered by Medicare at that point, uh, because of the law, but Hey, uh, we have a special guest, uh, or a special, uh, friend of ours, Shane Blanchard. He's chimed in. I want to say hello to, uh, Judy's journey, Hawaii. Hello, Judy. Appreciate you chiming in. Uh, Shane, appreciate your support. He had a question. Do you feel the healthcare in your country is better or worse than America for kidney patients? That would be a very difficult question for me to answer because I can only talk about um, my experience of the healthcare in England, but for me, the fact that I was in hospital for two months, signed my discharge papers, went home and didn't pay anything, I think that would be, <laughs> I, I, would, I would say that that's a much better advantage. I don't, I don't, I don't know, but on a, overall, I, I couldn't, I, I don't know, because I haven't experienced healthcare in America to be able to make that comparison, but I suppose there's advantages and disadvantages of both, but um, the, well, the Canadian <laughs> system, the Canadian system just tends to be longer wait times. Yeah, yeah. When I guess when you're paying for it out yeah. of pocket, they'll see you a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, than when you're waiting, you know, two months or three months for an appointment to come through. So there, like you said, there is advantages and disadvantages. Yeah. To, both, to both systems. Let's let's just put it this way: if if you don't have any health insurance here, uh, expect a huge bill to come in the mail, a <laughs> huge bill. And uh, in some cases, you have to pay for some things up front. And if you don't have the money, then I don't know. You know, it's 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 a tough system. It really is. Um, 
you know, it's, it's, it can be really tough. Uh, but, uh, I mean, we, we have a great system is once you get onto, you know, you know, Medicare, uh, once, once you get onto that, then, then you're in good shape. But, uh, like I said, if you don't have any insurance at all, uh, and I was, I was a product of that because most of my jobs that I worked, uh, were contract type of jobs that didn't offer insurance benefits. And so I would, I would work a contract. And then once that contract ended, I would go to the next type of contract job. I, I worked in technology, uh, t- technology repair. And, uh, those type of jobs for me just didn't offer benefits. And I knew that going in, uh, you know, at the time I thought I was, superhuman i was never going to get sick so i didn't worry about it uh but once i got sick you know wow i started realizing you know this is going to be really really expensive and look luckily for me though i i immediately went into uh to medicare and you know that took care of uh you know and it, it continues to take care of me uh, under that system but had i not had medicare and I'd be in a real big, uh, I'd be in bad shape right now as far as financially. And, um, but nonetheless, uh, that, th- those are some great, um, great aspects of, uh, you know, the kidney disease community that, you know, we, we definitely need to address, uh, uh, on our end. Uh, also, you know, spoke about prevention, uh, over here, you know, I would say that prevention over here is at a, at a, at a minimal. Uh, I wasn't very well educated on uh, kidney disease at all. And I was a type two diabetic, uh, hypertensive. Uh, the most education I got was they handed me a pamphlet and said, here, you have diabetes, uh, go home and read this. Uh, it can cause kidney disease. And that was it. That's all I heard. They, they didn't go over, you know, what kidney disease was and what could happen and dialysis. I didn't even know what dialysis was until I ended up in kidney failure. Uh, so there's a lot of different things that, you know, we definitely could approve on as far as uh, prevention and education. I really feel, uh, what, do, what do you think, Kyle? Oh, it's the same here. Um, with my platform, I don't know of many Canadians that are trying to there are some, but the group is very small that is trying to awaken awareness in regards to kidney failure, kidney disease. Um, I think both countries, without de answering, our two countries need to work together and we need to collaborate. I mean, being next door neighbors, there's a lot going on down there that's not going on up here. And even the fact that if I found a donor for my wife in the US, we can't bring that donor up here. And we're on the same piece of land in a way that we're one North America, but we can't have an American donor and you can't have a Canadian donor. And we probably open up the area to save more people's lives. And I'm even seeing a question from nutrition here. Mm-hmm. My wife has, my wife has um, a dietitian that she sees once a week to go over her blood numbers and you know, advise her on nutrition, but that's only in hospital. I don't even think that's because she's on dialysis. Just as a regular patient, we were never told anything on her nutrition. So there's a lot of work that can be done there in pre- preventative maintenance. Yes. Do, do they discuss nutrition over there in England? They do. They they have um, renal dietitians over here. Uh-huh. Um, but... I didn't find the one that I saw particularly helpful, <laughs> I have to say. Um, I, I expected that she would be um, saying to me, you know, eat more of this food because, you know, or less of this food because it will protect your kidneys, blah, blah, blah. But she just kept saying, well, because I'm not on dietary restrictions. So she just kept saying, well, you're not on dietary restrictions. So... It's just about eating a balanced diet. But I said, yeah, but surely there must be something that would be helpful, you know, and I just didn't find her to be that. I My health coach was more helpful when it came to things like this and doing my own research and making decisions um, what I was going to do um, 
to help my health, you know, my kidney health. And that has been effective because um, my kidney function is higher than what it was in 2019 when my consultant predicted I was six months away from dialysis. And I really believe that it's a combination of different things, but one of them certainly has been diet, what I'm eating or not eating. Yeah. As the case may be. Yeah. Yeah, nutrition is huge. I mean, um, you know, as you know, as as your kidneys start failing, they want you to follow a, a certain diet. Uh, over here, they start telling you, I think, to uh, stay away from protein <coughs> as much as possible. Uh, they start telling you certain foods that, you know, you should be eating, should not be eating, uh, things like that. Um, unfortunately for me, I was a little bit of a different case because I wasn't going uh, to uh, doctors on the regular. Uh, so uh, when I went into emergency failure, uh, my diet was a little bit different because once you get into kidney failure, then you need the protein. Uh, so they told me I had to pump, uh, you know, protein into my body to try to keep uh, my muscles from wasting away and things like that. So uh, I was actually able to eat uh, some protein, uh, you know, in a reasonable manner. Um, but, uh, you know, of course, I had to follow the renal diet, the, the low potassium, uh, low phosphorus uh, type of diet. And then, of course, they incorporated the uh, renal binders. Uh, and those are always fun. Uh, let me tell you, uh, <laughs> if you can only imagine. Uh, well, so I, sorry, Jonathan. That's all good. Go ahead, Kyle. Um, one, one thing that we've even noticed with Shannon just in the last month, and it could be good advice for others out there. We had a very busy week one month, about a month ago, and we were eating a lot of take takeout or takeaway in England. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> so we were a lot eating a lot of junk, not, not necessarily, we were trying to make good choices, but we, um, her numbers skyrocketed, phosphorus and everything else. The next couple of weeks we ate at home, we were cooking our own food and her, we, her dietitian came to her and said, whatever you're doing, continue because your numbers have come right back down. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we have a special guest there. We do. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, home cooking is very important. And we lifestyles don't allow it all the time. But we try at least six out of seven days to have a home cooked meal to keep our numbers at a regular. Yeah, for sure. You know, I think. Uh, you know, for, for me, I remember, you know, it was all about following that renal diet and uh, keeping your labs, you know, and you got to You got to keep your labs straight. So. Uh, but um, so D, I, I think uh, I think Kyle froze up on us a little bit, but that's OK. We'll continue. Yeah. There he is. OK, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but D, why don't you talk a little bit about your podcast and why you started your podcast? Uh and what you plan on, you know, what, what, what's your end goal of, uh, of your podcast? Um, as I touched on earlier, yeah. they, they, I started the podcast after the suggestion, my husband suggested doing a, a podcast and cause I, I was never really a hundred percent comfortable vlogging, um, just talking to the camera and not having any like response. It, it just didn't feel as comfortable or as natural to me um and so with the podcast i wanted to be able to to be more interactive and be able to interview people so that was an immediate thing that you know from the second episode in i started interviewing and so i interview um as i said medical clinicians and also fellow kidney warriors and really i believe that the lived experience is so powerful hearing someone's story knowing what they've been through you you know you can't recreate that it's it, it's something that is real and helps people where they're at like when you hear someone's story and you hear that they've been through something that you're going through um i think it's it is so powerful because absolutely i i know how scared i was when i was first diagnosed like 
when I was when I was told that my kidneys were failing, what I heard the doctor say was, "You're going to die." That's what I heard. That's not what he said, but that's what I heard. And you know, like he could have said a million words after them. I wasn't in the emotional place to receive any of the information that I was being given because all I could focus on was you're going to die, you're going to die, you're going to die. You know, that's all I could hear. That's all I, um, all I could think about. And so with the podcast, what I want to do is take people back to that, that moment when they've first been diagnosed and fill in all the gaps that they weren't in the emotional or psychological place to be able to take in and process and receive. And so with the podcast, I've done, you know, I've done podcasts with a renal nurse where we've talked about, well, what is kidney disease? What causes it? What are the signs and symptoms? I've done podcasts where I've taken people through their blood test results and explained, you know, what are the abbreviations? What's, what does creat mean? Creatinine. What is creatinine? You know, why are they looking at it? What are the normal ranges? And basically breaking the information down and taking people through it so they can be empowered to know that if their potassium is high, put back on your potassium. You know, they, it, it enables people to manage their kidney disease a lot better. And then, like I said, um, I'm about prevention. So if you know, you know, what symptoms to look for, what things to look out for, that empowers you to prevent going down that road in the first place, especially if you have hypertension or diabetes, you know, telling people, look, this is what you can do to take care of yourself. So my tagline, well, my main tagline for the podcast is, you know, choose to live. But the other main tagline for the, the podcast is sharing faith, knowledge, hope and love. So I want to encourage people that, you know, Kidney disease isn't just a death sentence. You can live a full life. You might have to do things differently and modify things and edit things. And you might have to sacrifice a few things. It's nothing compared to, you know, having that quality of life and length of life, you know, watching your children grow up or being able to move and run around with, uh, with your children and being able to enjoy life. There's, there's so much more to the disease than that. And, and I can honestly say that having kidney disease was one of the, you know, one of the worst, like most traumatic experiences when I was in the hospital, everything I experienced. You know, I, when I say I was fevering all night, every night for seven and a half weeks, I woke, I would wake up three, four, five, six times soaked from head to foot in my own sweat. I lost 12 kilos, which is like 28 plus pounds wow. in the time that I was in the hospital because I fe fevered so badly every single night. I know how I felt when I lay in bed and I was so weak from fevering that I didn't have the strength to, to lift myself out of a pool of my own sweat. I know wow. what it felt like when I, you know, if, if death was an option, to me at that time, I know I would have taken it. And when wow. I look back on how much I suffered during that time, and I look to now, and I and I think, and you know, when people are kind enough to send messages to me or tweet me or DM me, and they say how much the podcast is helping them, then it really shows that none of that was for nothing. None of that suffering was for nothing and and that something good has come out of something so horrendous and so painful but so it wasn't for nothing because no. as I sit here today I'm blessed to know that I've taught people things that has helped change their life and that just humbles me because I'm you know I'm glad I am I'm glad that God didn't answer that prayer and I'm still here because there's been so much good that has come out of this situation. So, so yeah, so the podcast really is, it's about empowerment because I really believe that knowledge is power 
And the more people know, the more that they can do for themselves. Because another expression that I have is, you are the common denominator at every single one of your health appointments. You are the only one that is at every single one of them. And sometimes when you're dealing with different doctors, different nurses, whatever health professional, sometimes things can slip through the net. So you have, you are that common denominator. So you have to be your health manager. And the only way that you can manage your health effectively is if you have the knowledge to be able to say to the doctor, you know, have you considered this, this, that? Speaking personally with my own situation, I was on a high dose of steroids and I basically negotiated my way all the way down to the lowest dose of prednisolone that you can be on to maintain your health. And, and the same with my other medications because less, you know, if my body can thrive with less, why am I on more? Is my is my way of thinking. So it really is, you know, knowledge is power. I'm always learning. And as I learn something, I'm excited to share it. So it's like, oh, everyone needs to know this. And I I literally can bring kidneys into I, any conversation. Like <laughs> you could be yeah. talking about anything and I could yeah. somehow get kidneys in there because you know, <laughs> I was saying to people, you know, take care of yourself. I would hate yeah. for you to be in my position. Yeah. And if it's that if it's preventable, then let's prevent it. Let's stop it from here. So, so yeah, that really is that the heart of my podcast is I really want to help people, and um, and learn for myself too. D, that is so uh, so powerful, so uh, inspiring. I really appreciate you sharing that with us. Uh, totally can uh, sympathize with you. Uh, and uh, we have some similarities uh, in our stories, but um, you know, there there's power in sharing your personal testimony. The Bible says uh, that you know there's power in that uh, in sharing your personal testimony. Uh, if you don't know what a testimony is, that's uh, you telling your story, so to speak. And uh, there's power in that. You know, there's power in sharing. Uh, you you don't know what what or who or uh, you know who you may touch, uh, mm -hmm. sharing your, your personal story. Um, and, uh, I'm, I'm much like you, I'm probably getting on my family members and, uh, friends and different people's nerves because I'm always talking about, uh, somehow it ends up on kidney disease. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm like, look, use me as an example, please take care of your type two diabetes, take care of your hypertension. Uh, you know, be careful because it's kidney disease is real. You know, and I want to let you know that if you don't manage uh, those two things, you know, you're you're going to you're going to end up like me. I just I'm not trying to scare you, but I want to help you. you know? And um, it, it really concerns me because there's so many people, I think, that are neglectful on the on things in their health. And, uh, you know, I look back and what I experienced personally, um, it's like. You know, you don't want to go through that. Trust me, it's it's a uh, it's a very scary experience. And um, so, but um, man, I appreciate you coming on the show. You have a very inspiring uh, spirit, and um, really appreciate you. Really appreciate the podcast as well. It's it's an awesome podcast, guys. If you haven't had a chance, please go over and uh, check out uh, Diary of a Kidney Warrior podcast. Uh, it's an amazing podcast. And uh, Kyle, uh, I definitely appreciate you uh, selecting D as the Warrior of the Month. Uh, you, you have an excellent program with uh, KWM uh, Kidney Warrior merch um, with selecting these uh, warriors. And um, really appreciate you guys doing the show today. It's been a very inspiring show. Um, I'm hoping that uh, people will catch this on the rewatch later. Uh, and also, guys, you'll be able to find this interview on my YouTube channel at Hope with Jonathan. Uh, so if you ever want to go over and watch it, that's that would be awesome. Uh, and also, uh, please go and uh, subscribe to uh, D's uh, podcast, Diary of a Kidney Warrior podcast. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in closing before we close out the show that you would like to say? Yeah, just very quickly. Um, D, I thank you for submitting your story to us. Um, very inspirational and 
having you come on today and tell your story on the show. Um, and anyone else out there, you know, it's right over there. Some are starting conversations. That's where we're, we're about. And a lot of warriors are opening up and, and telling their story. And we're going to, even if you don't know how to tell your story, reach out. We'll, we'll find a way for you. There's no proper way of doing this. There's no proper way of searching for a kidney donor. There, there's Every way is new. But also, if you're anywhere in the world, we're just showing you right here with the two beautiful people above me that we're all over the world and we're connected in some way. So if, if you connect with me and you're in England and you need some help, I'm, I know D will be there with a message to help you. And in the U.S., Jonathan, Jonathan's almost a nephrologist. He has so much information and he'll be willing to help. So this is, this is just more than an interview. This is a, you know, people coming together to raise awareness. And that's what we're all about and getting, getting your story as far as possible. So we're here for you. Yeah. Three different countries connected by kidney disease. It's, mm -hmm. it's amazing, an amazing interview. I, I think it's really awesome that we were able to get this uh, worked out. And uh, Dee's logo is sitting uh, over to her, I guess <laughs> it would be her right or left. One of yeah. the <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> so look for that logo yeah, the opposite. For, her, for her podcast. That's her logo. And um, Dee, why don't you close this out with maybe uh, some words of advice or something positive for kidney warriors out there that are uh, maybe they're just got diagnosed with kidney disease or maybe they're waiting on a kidney transplant. Maybe you want to leave them with maybe some words of just positivity. Okay. Well, first I'd, I would like to thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Jonathan, for inviting me and having me on today. And I just want to say that, you know, what you're doing, you know, hope with Jonathan, it is such a powerful thing because I really believe that a person without hope is a dead person. They're dead they're dead in their mind before their body is dead. A person without hope is lost. A person without hope, they, they will die quicker. And so what you're doing instead of, in terms of encouraging people, in terms of um, finding donors, everything that you're doing and everything that you're doing, Kyle, in terms of the kidney community, raising awareness, it is so amazing and so powerful. And I just want to say that you're just awesome. You really are so awesome what you're doing. And I just pray that God continues to give you that strength to keep going and keep doing. I know this work is not easy. You know, there's a lot that goes on in the background that people don't see. You know, all the preparation and the editing and the work. And, you know, if you were to be paid according to what you do, you'd be a billionaire. But you do a lot of what you do for free. And it's not easy. So I just want to say that you guys are so awesome and please talk to me with what you're doing because it really is needed. And there's a song that says, for we may never know all the people that we have touched. You know, for the for the people that, that encourage you and help you, there's still people out there who are watching you and listening to your content that their lives are changed by what you're doing. So I just want to encourage you to keep going. In Thank, you. In Thank, terms, you. Thank you. <laughs> in terms of my encouragement for any, if anybody out there who's newly diagnosed with kidney disease, my advice to them would is kidney disease is not just a death sentence. You can have a full life. You might have to do things differently but you can still live a normal life. Don't, don't lose the things that are important to you. If you loved going for walks, go out for walks. If you loved going to the cinema or different things, well, COVID's changed that, but the things that you used to do before, still do them. Keep as, as much of your normal, your normal life as possible because this disease it can steal so much from you and you might feel like, you know, you'll never have a normal life again. But what I will say is 
take it one step at a time, one day at a time. You, you only have to take one more step than you did yesterday to make progress. And then the next day, take one more step further. And then before you know it, you've walked a full mile. Before you know it, you've, worked, you've walked 10 miles. And that's it, how it is with this journey. You know, whatever it may be, give yourself permission to make mistakes, to try things, to rest. Like, it's hard when, you know, to when you feel tired all the time, this, that, and you're there. You might feel guilty that you can't do this and you can't do that, especially if you have children or other responsibilities. Give yourself permission to rest and take care of yourself. Give yourself permission to do things differently than you did before to enable you to do them now. And read as much as you can, learn as much as you can about this disease so that you can empower yourself with knowledge to thrive within this condition. And just keep going. Don't give up. You can do this. So that's my advice. Thank you so much, Dee. That was uh, very inspiring again. Um, again, guys, really appreciate Dee Moore uh, coming on all the way from England. Uh, may, amazing, amazing ho uh, guest today. Uh, Kyle, appreciate you uh, coming on as well as co-hosting. Thank you. Guys, uh, again, you can go over and uh, check out uh, Diary of a Warrior, uh, Kidney Warrior podcast. <laughs> 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 I'm on Instagram as well so check me out on Instagram and Facebook yes she's on Instagram um, so you can find her over there and uh, thank you Dee for uh, telling me about that <laughs> and uh, reminding me <laughs> and uh, you can you can find Kyle pretty much everywhere too he's on the main three Facebook Instagram Twitter uh, so he's he's on all three um, I believe he's even on TikTok. Sometimes he's dancing on there. I don't know if you want to watch <laughs> that or not. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but guys, this has been a really inspiring interview and I uh, really thank uh, my, my co-host, special guest. And uh, we're going to go ahead and conclude the, this show. Uh, appreciate you guys supporting the show and uh, appreciate everyone uh, sharing this with your friends. And um Appreciate all the comment. Uh, we had a couple of people commenting on there, so really appreciate it. And uh, guys, listen, uh, if you're out there and uh, you know you're facing kidney disease, like D said, you know you gotta you gotta hang on to hope, guys. And uh, remember that there's always hope. And uh, as long as you know you can uh, manage your uh, kidney disease at a at a good uh, level and uh, work and you're working with your team, then uh, you know you you can live and uh, live live a life. Uh, no, it may not be a completely normal life, uh, you know, back to where you was before, uh, but uh, you, you can manage it and uh, learn how to live with it. And, um, but anyway, guys, I, I wanna go ahead and conclude this interview. Uh, thank you again. You guys take care out there. God bless you. Stay safe and remember to take care of your kidneys. KidneyTrails.com Kidney Trails is an organization that is dedicated to helping those that may be facing kidney disease by education, inspiration, and motivation, by bringing real life experience from those that have traveled the road of kidney disease, and also information from the medical professionals to help you on your journey. Guys, Kidney Trails offers blog writings from many different writers and authors 
who give an aspect and real life experiences with battling kidney disease, dialysis, transplant, and more. Guys, kidneytrails.com has videos. They also offer a podcast called the Kidney Trails Podcast. And soon to be released, a comic book is coming out. Guys, for more information on this, go to www.kidneytrails.com. Hey guys, I really appreciate you tuning in to the Hope with Jonathan podcast. Really appreciate all the feedback, support for Hope with Jonathan podcast and what we're doing with Hope with Jonathan Live. Really, really appreciate it. Kyle Hawkridge introducing me to the lovely D. Moore from Diary of a Kidney Warrior podcast. It was an amazing time, amazing interview. I'm really, really honored that she would come on and do the show. It was really, really cool to have three different countries represented with England, Canada, and the United States of America. Definitely, definitely was a really, really awesome time. And again, guys, if you haven't had a chance, please go over and check out her podcast, The Diary of a Kidney Warrior Podcast. It's streaming across most platforms. I know for sure you can check it out on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. She also has a YouTube channel. Guys, go like, follow, subscribe, all of the above. And most importantly, guys, share for her. She's got some amazing interviews. All right, guys. Really appreciate all the love. You guys really, really have showed me so much appreciation. I really, really, really appreciate all the feedback and support. Again, guys, sending you a shout out all the way from Kerrville, Texas, and God bless you guys. Remember to stay safe and remember to take care of your kidneys. God bless.